Hey guys, this is Captain Lando Yeast with Nomad Fishing Charters. Today I'm going to be discussing a very important part of every fishing trip, which is chum. I'm going to be telling you about the different types of chum, and I'm also going to be discussing how to use the chum properly. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank all of you that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel. Those of you that are hitting the like button and sending your questions and suggestions and comments. I really appreciate it. That's how we're going to keep this channel growing. We can bring you more videos. There are two things I never leave the dock without, and that is chum and a frozen bonita. If I have one, if I don't have a frozen bonita, maybe I'll bring a bag with some frozen value. But those are two things I always like to bring. And there's a reason for that. The chum is very important to have on the boat for things like catching bait. A lot of our fishing involves live bait. We use the chum to catch that live bait in the morning and to attract it to the boat. Uh, some days, especially in the summer months, in the fall, we do a lot of bottom fishing. When we're doing bottom fishing, we're using the chum for things like snapper, or maybe when we're fishing some of the wrecks, we'll use the, the chum in order to attract the fish to the boat. So I always take some chum. Uh, some days I'll take a couple of boxes if I don't intend on using a lot. Uh, and other days I'll take a couple of cases if I'm gonna be bottom fishing. So let's tell you a little bit more about the types of chum and when and how you're going to use them. Now there are many different types of chum. Uh, today we're going to be primarily focusing on frozen ground chum, which is what we use most of the time. Uh, but things like uh, pilchards can also be used as chum, although it's, it's live chum. So that's a type of chum too. Uh, silver sides can be used for chumming as well. Uh, but we're going to be focusing today on ground uh, chum or Manhattan chum. So let's begin with uh, bait fishing, which is what we use a chum for most of the time. If you're going to be bait fishing, you want to use a chum, uh, preferably either a herring chum or Manhattan chum, something that's really oily. Uh, these come in different brands, different types. Uh, you want to get the finest chum possible. Some of it is what they call double ground, which it's, it's ground very fine. And you can actually put that in a bag with a very fine mesh. And this accomplishes two things. It keeps your chum together and it lasts longer. And actually when you're bait fishing, you don't really need big chunks flowing out. You just need small pieces and a constant flow going out. If you are bottom fishing, then you wanna use a bag with bigger holes that'll allow larger chunks of chum out. And you don't need that really fine chum. You still want the oil, you still want that fishy smell, but you don't need the, the chum that's super ground. You need something that's a little more substantial for fish like mangrove snapper, mutton snapper, yellowtail, anything of that nature, any bottom fish that might you know, be attracted to the chum. One of the key ingredients in the chum is the oil. A lot of these companies will add some Manhattan oil to their chum. And I preferably like the chum that comes in a plastic bag. They'll actually put it in a plastic bag before putting it in the box. The reason for this is a lot of times during shipping, the chum will thaw a little bit and it'll lose some of that oil. It'll just spill out. When it's in a bag, it tends to be better and more effective. A lot of times I've noticed that when you put a block of chum in the water, it tends to be more effective for the first part of its life. The second part of its life, it gets washed out and it's not nearly as effective. Now, most of the time, the chum goes in a bag. And again, you have to choose the bag depending on what you're doing. If you're bottom fishing, you want a bag that's easy to open, easy to you know drop the blocks in. If you're bait fishing, you want a bag with smaller mesh. Also, if you're doing something like yellowtail fishing and you're deep, you may want to make some uh, balls with your chum. You can take some chum the night before, thaw it out, and mix it with mason sand, or you can mix it with oats, or mix it with both and make chum balls. These chum balls you can take and drop over the side, and they'll actually the sand will help the chum sink to the bottom and raise your fish up from the bottom. That's another good way to do it. You can also sand ball for yellowtail if you're in deep water, and that's very effective as well. You know, a little sand balling is very effective. It's not my preferred way to fish just because it's so messy and it involves a lot of cleanup. But if you're willing to put up with the mess, then sand balling is a good way to go. Like I said, especially in the deep water. For us, most of the time when we're yellowtail fishing, we're fishing anywhere between 60 and 90 feet. And what we typically do is we'll bring a bucket with some oats, rolled oats, and we'll mix it with some of the soft chum, creating little balls. We can mix that together and toss it over the side in addition to the ground chum that's already in the back. 
Uh, the oats help bring up fish like yellowtails and snapper, all types of snapper up from the bottom. And also one of the things with chumming that people don't realize is that when you're chumming, you are attracting other fish. Uh, that chum travels with the current and a lot of times you get your garbage fish up first. When I say garbage fish, I mean fish like chubs will come up first. Then you may get some ballyhoo. Sometimes you get lucky, you get speedos, which you're gonna have to catch and turn into more bait. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, but all this time, there's fish and there's commotion on the surface. Uh, your larger fish, your snapper, mutton snapper, your uh, black grouper, gag grouper, all these fish that are further back are going to pick up on that commotion and pick up on those sounds, on those feeding sounds on the surface. And fish are, tend to be very curious. A lot of times you'll catch these larger fish towards the end of your trip after you've been chumming for a while. What will happen is these fish are way back, who knows, a quarter mile back. They'll pick up on that scent trail and they'll follow right back to the source, which is the boat. And eventually you may not get those bites right off the bat, but if you put in the time, you'll find that you catch some nicer fish. A lot of people are under the impression that they're only going to catch fish if they're in some kind of magical spot. That is not true. You can catch fish just about anywhere if you sit there and you chum long enough and you let the fish come to you and you're patient. The other thing I want to mention is not to pepper the fish with a lot of lines. A lot of people that are inexperienced like to come out and they've got two, three, four people on the boat. And as soon as the anchor catches, everybody's firing away baits. You don't want to do that. If you pepper the fish with a lot of baits and a lot of lines, the fish become very skittish and it'll be very hard to catch anything. I like to limit the number of lines, uh, kind of depending, I kind of feel it out. I start with one bait on the bottom, maybe one, maybe two baits on the surface. At first, I just like to fish a couple baits until I get things going. If the bite's real good, then I will add another line and another line, depending on how good they're biting. If the fish are very uh, skittish and they're staying way back, then I limit the lines. I also like to use the lightest line possible, especially for things like yellowtail. In areas like we fish, like here in Miami, the fish are under a lot of pressure and the heavier lines and the heavier leaders just do not work. You have to go light and a lot of times those fish are way back. So you gotta be patient and you gotta really work it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found the information to be useful. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit that like button and leave your questions and comments. Until next time, my name is Captain Orlando Hughes with Nomad Fishing.